Let's take a look at another example. Let me share a new screen with you. So this is just sort of a PowerPoint slide here that shows you a few details. So in North Alaska, and you might recognize the map here as that being Alaskan and Canadian region. Um, I'm not going to probably pronounce this correctly, but the Inupiaq region, uh, uh, indigenous uh, folks that live in that area. Here's some pictures that I gathered from some of the websites of some of the folks that live in this northern Alaskan region. You can see them dressed, you know, of course, for cold weather. Um, had a base 20 system, not that every uh, person living in that region did, and not that every um, tribal dialect necessarily had base 20, but it was very common. And looked at some of the documents that um, were shared there. Let me share just a few with you as well. So first, um, first thing I want to share is the numeration system itself. So let me zoom out here. You can see a little bit here. This is a base 20 system starting with the digit zero, which kind of looks like a, an alpha or fish symbol kind of facing downwards. And then you might see one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to 19. Notice there's 20 digits in base 20. So what you'll want to do first is pause the video and see if you can figure out the code of what's going on. Like, how are these numbers? Like, what's the pattern here? And I'm going to let you figure that out by hitting pause here. Um, so let's go to the literature just a little bit. So this comes from an article um, titled, let's see, the Nupac region by Elmer Jackson. Um, published, I'll have to figure out the publishing date later. But in this article, I want to scroll down here. On the left part, we see I have it marked in red. The, uh, again, pronunciation is going to be a problem. The Kaktavik Nupiak numerals begin as an ordinary math enrichment activity at Kavaluk Middle School on Barter Island, because, uh, but because of the remarkable simplicity, now you might question that, but simplicity of the system, it has caught on as a way of expressing in symbols the number of the Nupiak language. It has gained recognition not only on the North Slope and in Alaska generally, but it has also gained attention nationally as well as internationally. I think it's because it's a very interesting and intriguing system. So if you looked at the numerals on pause, you might have recognized that it also is kind of simplistic in its nature. Let's go back and look. So one is just sort of one stroke, right? But a two is one, two strokes. A three is a one, two, three strokes, and a four is one, two, three, four strokes. When you get to a five, you kind of use a more horizontal line approach. So five, the horizontal, and then five and one more, six, five, six, seven, five, six, seven, eight, and so on. Getting down to the bottom numerals, if you look at 17, it's five, 10, 15, 16, 17, and that kind of has a natural way that it works there. So they're using, they are using a base 20 approach to do this. So let's take a look uh, just for a moment at how this will work. I have another document which um, outlines a little bit of the pronunciation guide. It's not very helpful to me. You can certainly pause the video and take a look at it. You'll notice that the, the, the numbers themselves are pronounced differently depending upon the region or and or dialect. But what I really wanna dig into is the enumeration system and how it works itself because it is a base 20 system. And in this unit, you'll also look at the Mayan numeration system, which was a base 20 as well. So two great examples of that. Um, here on, on the left, our first example, and I have a guide at the bottom, the digit, the digits are 16, 8, 0, 11. If you put those back to back, I don't know how to pronounce the number authentically. Obviously, we would pronounce it something like this, 16, 8, 0, 11 in base 20. So if you see these symbols, you'll know it's the Nupac symbols, and thus you're thinking in terms of a 20 to 1 machine and or base 20 machine. If you label the place values, we have the ones place, we have the 20s place, 20 times 20, 400s place, 8,000s place and so on. That's all we need here. Since we have these digits in order, we have a 16 in the 8,000th place. So if you wanted to put the dots, not that it's going to help you get the answer, you could certainly do that to think about the value of it. What it really means is we have 16 8,000s. Okay, 16 8,000s, that has a certain value. In the next place value, we have the symbol eight. So we have four dots or a value of eight times 400 in this place value. And the next one over, notice there's the symbol for zero. So there's nothing in that box. We have zero twenties. And then lastly, we have an 11, the symbol for 11 in the ones place. Okay, so that means I just have 11 times one uh, in that position. If we add all of that up together, we can figure out the value for us in our base 10 system from left to right. 16 times 8,000 is very large, 128,000, plus the next one over, plus the ones place. 
So assuming I didn't do this incorrectly in my calculator, I have 131211 or 131,211, a quite large number for us. Let's take a look at our second example. If you were given a number in our base 10 numeration system and you wanted to take it to new block, let's take a look at the step. Let's take a look at this number going backwards. You would still never draw a base 10 frame since we understand the base 10 system so well, we're only going to draw the frames in the bases we're unfamiliar with. In this case, 20 to one or base 20. So remember when you're going backwards, well, actually really, uh, yeah, this is truly backwards. You're taking it from the system you're familiar with to a number system, another number system. You're kind of trying to build the number. If we go out to the 8,000th place, you can see that's already too much. We don't need that much. So we're really going to work in the 400s place and try to discover how many there. Well, I don't know off the top of my head how many 400s it takes to make that large of a number. I might use a calculator and divide 5849 divided by 400. It tells me it's a little over 14, but certainly 14 of those will go there. So, and you don't have, again, you don't have to draw the dots. I'm only illustrating that for you to tie it to what we've done before. And if I put a 14 there, 14 times 400 gives me a value in this place value of 5,600. So we're getting close, right? If we subtract 5849, I can see I have 249 more. Um, if I count by 20s, I can count by 20s in the next place value until I get close to 249. So it sounds like this. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 20, 40, 80, 60, 200, 220, 240. I can't do one more. You count all those up. You can see that I put a grand total of 12 dots in there. 12 times 20 is 240. All right, and that leaves me with nine more to go. So I will put nine in the ones place and I have it. So what's really going on is I have 14 dots in this place value. I have 12 dots in this place value. And then I have nine dots in this place value. If I were to write this using the new block symbols, then I would go back to maybe my guide, look at those symbols for 14 and take a look at what it looks like and, and uh, the other ones as well. And then we can carry those back in and try to write that out to the best of our ability. So the number 14 looks something like this. 5, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 12 looks like this. 5, 10. 11, 12, and then nine, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And that is our number. And that's how we would convert both directions.